This lesson provides an overview of the principles and theory of combined cycle power plant design and operation. Its purpose is to provide a basic understanding of the major components of the combined cycle power plant. This lesson also discusses the increasing demand for combined cycle power plants and the unique characteristics of the combined cycle power plant. The objectives for this lesson are 1. Differentiate between simple cycle operation and combined cycle operation of a combustion turbine power plant. 2. Relate the processes shown on a Brayton Cycle TS diagram to a combustion turbine power plant. 3. Relate the processes shown on a Rankine Cycle TS diagram to a conventional thermal power plant. 4. Describe factors affecting heat transfer and HRSG efficiency. There are many different types of power plants, including thermal and hydraulic power plants. Thermal power plants burn a fuel to produce heat energy that is converted to electrical energy through a series of processes. Hydraulic power plants convert the potential energy of water to electrical energy as it flows from higher to lower elevations. A traditional thermal power plant operates on the Rankine cycle. A power plant cycle is a series of processes in which a fluid, typically water or steam, is used to convert heat energy to mechanical energy. The Rankine cycle in its simplest form consists of a boiler, a turbine, a condenser, and a boiler feed pump. The Rankine cycle has been refined considerably over the years and made more efficient by the addition of components like feed water heaters, superheaters, and reheaters. The efficiency of the Rankine cycle has also been improved by increasing the pressure and temperature of the cycle. The first industrial combustion turbines for power production and other industrial applications, such as driving locomotives, were introduced in the United States shortly after World War II. Combustion turbines operate based on another type of power plant cycle called the Brayton cycle. The first commercial industrial combustion turbines were relatively inefficient, typically having a 16 to 17 percent thermal efficiency. As the combustion turbine industry matured, the designs improved. Use of combustion turbines in the power utility industry increased steadily from their introduction in the late 1940s until the early 1970s. Then the demand for electric power exceeded production increases from the addition of new Rankine cycle plants alone. Combustion turbine plants were attractive because they could be built much more rapidly than Rankine cycle plants. Boomed. The oil crisis of the early 1970s brought a sudden halt to the popularity of combustion turbines for three reasons. First, almost all utility combustion turbines used either gas or oil for fuel. The cost of these fuels went up dramatically as supply plummeted. Secondly, the oil crisis brought renewed attention to the need for efficiency. Combustion turbines of this era were significantly less efficient than Rankine cycle plants. Finally, the emphasis on conserving energy throughout the U.S. reduced the increasing demand for new power plants. Recently, combustion turbine plant demand has boomed, partly because of steady increases in efficiency due to material and design improvements. Additionally, growth has been spurred by the growing popularity of combined cycle plants. A combined cycle plant consists of one or more combustion turbines that drive generators and exhaust into a special boiler called a heat recovery steam generator, or HERSIG, that generates steam for a Rankine cycle unit. High thermal efficiency is one of the principal reasons for the popularity of the combined cycle power plants. Combined cycle plants can have thermal efficiencies as high as 58 percent. Higher efficiencies are achieved because heat from the combustion turbine exhaust is used in the Rankine cycle portion of the plant instead of being rejected to the atmosphere. Combined cycle plants also require a relatively short time for construction. 
Although it takes longer to build a combined cycle plant than a simple gas turbine plant, a combined cycle plant can be built in much less time than a Rankine cycle plant of comparable output. However, combined cycle plants rely primarily on natural gas and fuel oil. Typically, natural gas and fuel oil are more costly fuel sources when compared to abundant domestically produced coal. Because of this, a combined cycle plant is typically more efficient thermodynamically, but a coal plant might be less expensive to run due to lower fuel costs. The future is bright for combined cycle power generation. As growing demand provides the momentum for technological advances, more efficient and flexible applications of combined cycle power generation can be expected. Label the components of a combined cycle plant. The first major component of the combined cycle power plant is the combustion turbine. In a combined cycle plant, if only the combustion turbine is operating, the plant is operating in simple cycle mode. If the HERSIG and steam turbine are also operating, the plant is operating in combined cycle mode. The major components of the combustion turbine are the air compressor section, a combustion section, and a turbine section. In the air compressor section, the air is compressed. This compression can increase the density of the air by a factor of up to 16. During the compression, the temperature of the air increases and may be as high as 600 degrees Fahrenheit at the discharge of the compressor. In the combustion section, fuel is injected into the compressed air and burned to convert the fuel's chemical energy into heat energy. The burning fuel produces a high temperature, high pressure gas with considerable energy. The hot gas enters the turbine section where it expands and cools. During the process of expansion and cooling, heat energy in the gas is converted to mechanical energy used to rotate the turbine shaft. Approximately 60% of the work from the turbine is used to drive the air compressor. The remaining work is available to drive an electrical generator and therefore produce power. Turbine exhaust gas is at a lower temperature and pressure than the turbine inlet, but is still very hot. In a simple cycle plant, the heat in the gas is rejected to the atmosphere. Drag and drop the labels for the combustion turbine components. The combustion turbine thermodynamic cycle uses the Brayton thermodynamic cycle. The four processes of the Brayton cycle can be represented on a temperature entropy TS diagram. The TS diagram is a convenient way to illustrate and analyze the performance of power plant cycles. Temperature, or T, is represented on the vertical axis and entropy, S, is represented on the horizontal axis. Entropy is a property of substances that describes the availability of heat energy to do work based on temperature.
The TS diagram is useful in analyzing thermodynamic cycles because it illustrates the amount of heat required to make a process work in a cycle. If a process can be represented as a curve on the TS diagram, the area under the curve is the amount of heat required to make that process occur. Each process in the ideal Brayton cycle is represented by a curve in the diagram. An ideal process is one in which there is no loss of energy due to friction. The first process in the Brayton cycle is the compression of air by the compressor, represented by the line AB. As the air is compressed, its temperature increases. Work is done on the cycle to compress the air in this process. The second process is the addition of heat to the cycle at a constant pressure by burning of fuel represented by the curve BC. The temperature of the gas that results from the combustion increases considerably from the temperature of the air at the compressor outlet. The third process is the expansion and cooling of the gas in the turbine, represented by the line CD. Work is done by the cycle in this process. The final process in the Brayton cycle is the cooling of the hot gas exhausted to the atmosphere, represented by the curve DA. This process of heat rejection occurs at a constant pressure. Label the processes of the Brayton cycle. The amount of heat that is required to make the Brayton cycle work is represented by the area under the curve BC. The fraction of heat that is rejected is represented by the area under the curve DA. The area between these two curves represents the heat that is converted to useful mechanical energy. The heat converted to useful mechanical energy is 20 to 25 percent of the total heat required to make the process work. The figure shows the energy supplied and energy output from a typical combustion turbine cycle. The data reflects operation at 100 percent load. The data is based on an ambient temperature of 59 degrees Fahrenheit and site altitude of 1700 feet above sea level. Assuming the energy supplied by the fuel is 925 million BTU per hour, the power output of the combustion turbine is 81,074 kilowatts. Overall, the efficiency of the combustion turbine is only 29.92 percent. The temperature of the exhaust gas is 990 degrees Fahrenheit, and the exhaust gas flow is 2,577,856 pounds per hour. A large portion of the inefficiency results from energy lost to the atmosphere in the exhaust gas. If the heat energy remaining in the exhaust gas were converted to electrical energy, in this instance, an additional 179 megawatts could be generated by the cycle. In reality, it is impossible to convert all of this heat energy into electrical energy, but it is possible to recover a large portion of the heat energy in the exhaust gas by operating the plant in the combined cycle mode. In a combined cycle plant, the combustion turbine exhaust heat energy is used as a heat source for a Rankine cycle plant. The combustion turbine thermodynamic cycle is the Brayton cycle. The four processes of the Brayton cycle are which of the following?